All right, Rod, why don't you, uh, this is your chance to tell us what's great about this theater, why it works. The reason this theater works? Um, I think the main reason is that um, we, uh, we really didn't know that much about contemporary theater. So we took the trouble to find out um, the best, the things that need to be done um, to produce a good actor's theater and a good community theater. Um, in this, uh, in the case of the Meadowvale Community Theater where we're, we're sitting, here we are in the audience chamber, um, the city of Mississauga had a very tight budget, $4.2 million, uh, which included everything. That had to pay for the equipment, well, the building, the equipment, the site works, and the architect's fees. And uh, so really it left about $3.8 million. So um, Arun Sain and myself, who worked on the design of this particular building, um, we were fortunate in having a very good committee to work with. The um, uh, theater committee for this, this building was a very dedicated group who knew a great deal about theater in all its aspects. And we worked very closely with them to satisfy their requirements to produce an ideal uh, performing environment and an ideal environment for the, for the audience. However, because there was not a lot of money, in fact, th th there was maybe a million less than one would normally have hoped for, for a building of this size, uh, we adopted an approach which we call bootstrapping, where the, we designed the whole building to do all of the things that one would want, and then take the position that some of these requirements could be deferred. So it meant that the building had to be built to provide the things that could not be deferred and then do it in such a way that the deferred items could be put in as and when the community could afford them. And so in, in this particular instance, there was a great debate about whether there should be a fly tower. And the committee were unanimous that the theater would not be a theater if it did not have a proper professional full-size fly tower. So this building has a 75-foot fly tower which can take 52 lines, which was built, as also was the rehearsal room, the orchestra pit, and then obviously the audience chamber and so on. So we had to find ways of, of saving money, but at the same time produce a fine theater. And it's our understanding that we succeeded at this, that this theater um, has been very, very popular. It's about 92% fully booked, 92% booked over the next two years, um, and certainly within the first year of its opening, it, it reached this level of booking very quickly. Um, but also that the theater would respond over time to the many things that we'd be looking, or the, the owners and the, and the users would be looking to do in this theater. So this theater, you'll find, has all of the attributes of very large and very expensive uh, major theaters. It, it has all of the back of the house facilities. It has an orchestra pit. It has provision for a lift in that pit. Um, it has all of these things, but some of them we built the structure and the, the, the lift, for ins instance, isn't there. But it's been provided for, so it can be added later. <coughs> Similarly, if we go out into the rehearsal room, you'll find that the acoustics in the rehearsal room are not very good because we designed the room to be acoustically fine and then took all the acoustic material out as a money-saving um, venture, which can be readily put back uh, as and when the funds are available. And that these changes are not like changes to the building. They're very simple additions so that the, the uh, management of the theater can get a lot of mileage for its money in these add-ons. Another good example was when the theater was opened we provided 16 lines in the tower. Since then, another six have been added, and it goes on with the lights and so on. So from day one, the theater was made so that it could put on any, any level of performance in a very wide variety of, of um, presentations um, and do it well from day one. 
and then as time, went, as time goes on, it'll become richer and finer uh, as funds become available. And we think that you have a very similar situation at Guelph, that you have a bigger budget, you already have a building, uh, so that building can provide some of the, of the facility for that sort of bootstrapping operation. But also, because you have a bigger budget, you can have a finer building than we were able to afford here. And I mention this quite openly because, uh, you know, architects tend to try to avoid talking about the aesthetics of their buildings. But in this building, we had to make some very hard choices. Uh, the owner, um, uh, Mayor McCallion, told us quite straight that she had $4.2 million and that was it. There couldn't be a, you know, an appeal or anything and get another half million or million. It had to be done for the price. So that in cooperation with the client, we stripped a lot of finishes off the outside of the building. We took things out of the lobby. Uh, we reduced some of the finishes in the audience chamber. Um, however, we didn't do anything that would, would downgrade the enjoyment of the facility by the audience, either in the foyer or in the audience chamber, or the quality of performance that the, that the performers could put on. And we believe very strongly that all of these things over the next hundred years can be upgraded on this building. So, 25 years from now, it probably won't look the way it does today, except in its major form. So this, in a sense, is if we are given the opportunity to be the architects for the, for the Performing Arts Center at Guelph, which we really want to be, um, we, would, we would ask that we could work closely with a committee in this manner, so that we can custom make what you want. This is what we did here. We custom made what this community wanted. We did not impose on them our theatrical philosophy. We did what they wanted with the resources that they could afford at the time they were doing it. And <clears throat> although it may sound that I've emphasized this question of cost, I, I do believe quite sincerely that theaters have tended to go awry, as it were, where the aesthetics of the building have very often taken over from the purpose of the building, that the purpose that the building originally had. And so there's a, a, a distortion of priorities, um, which comes back usually in large amounts of extra cost. And we honestly didn't believe that it was necessary to spend any more money than was spent here to get what was done here. Obviously, it could have been done in a more fancy way, but we didn't think it was necessary. So this, in a sense, um, we have done other theatres. Um, we have not done as many as, as some of our competitors. But we do believe that our, our emphasis on trying to find out in detail what the client wants and then responding to it makes up for our lack of having done 10 or 20 or 50 theatres. That's great. Uh, what's the sound like? Can you just check the sound a bit? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, you can hear very uh, quietly the bangs. So it's not a problem? It's not really, no, the voice is very, uh...